Hello everyone, welcome to Barca News. It is April 14th, 2023, and it's been discovered that Javier Tebas charged the Club Mallorca money in order to produce some reports, which is basically the same thing that Enrique Stegreira was doing. Also, it's reported that Barcelona have identified a new talent in the Croatian market. And finally, there are doubts about what to do in regards to Shadriad's future with the club. We have a lot to discuss, so let's begin. Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Mo, and before we begin with the news, please don't forget to subscribe and like this video. It would go a long way in helping this small and humble channel continue to grow. Also, if you're looking for Barcelona merchandise, make sure you hit the kit bag where they have the biggest selection of Barcelona gear. The link is down below in the description. Now, as reported in yesterday's video, Osman Dembele is expected to come back by the match against Atletico de Madrid, which is scheduled for April 23rd. And there's been a lot of you in the comment section asking me, why has that recovery of Dembele taken so long? And we now have some reports that have given us a glimpse on why Dembele's recovery, which was supposed to be 15 days, has now extended to three months. Now, it seems that the Barcelona doctors are reporting that Dembele's muscle recovery or healing process is very slow. In fact, is much slower than your average athlete. So as such, Barcelona have had to implement an extra conservative treatment plan for Dembele, much more conservative than, uh, than a treatment plan that the club would implement for any other player with a similar injury. So Barcelona have been extra careful with Dembele since his healing is very slow because they don't want to risk any kind of re-injury because if Dembele is re-injured even a little bit, that just pushes the recovery by weeks because again, Dembele's muscles heal very slowly, much slower than your average player. Now to add to this slow healing process, there's also of course the fact that uh, Dembele is currently fasting during the month of Ramadan. As some of you might know, Dembele is Muslim and all Muslims around the world are currently observing the holy month of Ramadan where you have to fast from sunrise to sundown and when you're not allowed to eat anything or even drink any kind of water. So Dembele has been doing his training sessions without any water and of course hydration is the number one most important factor when it comes to muscle recovery. So this is of course making the recovery that much longer. Now for all of you Muslims around the world who are observing the month of Ramadan, I would like to wish you a Ramadan Mubarak and hopefully your fast is going well and hopefully we'll be celebrating Eid pretty soon. Now on to the news that the sport media outlet El Español in Spain have revealed that Javier Tebas had charged 232,000 euros to the football club Mallorca back in 2008 to produce reports about players while he was still the vice president of La Liga. Now, why is this news relevant? It's relevant because Barcelona are currently caught in a scandal where it was discovered that they had hired the former referee Enrique Stegreira as a consultant for the club so he can produce reports about players and about referees. And that's not the scandal that they hired him. Of course, that's the norm in La Liga where all clubs hire former referees to advise them about players and referees. But what the scandal really revolves around is that Enrique Stegreira was also the vice president of the board of referees. So that's, of course, a clear conflict of interest. And as a result, um, the prosecutor's office in Spain have filed corruption charges against Barcelona. And Javier Tebas has been very vocal about this, saying that Jean Laporta needs to resign from his post, that Barcelona are staining the image and the reputation of La Liga. And what happens now, we find out that Javier Tebas had done the same exact thing while he was the vice president of La Liga, and he had gotten paid 232,000 euros in order to produce reports about players to the football club Mallorca. Now, Javier Tebas has responded to this article in Twitter saying that it's not the same thing, that as the vice president of La Liga, he's allowed to do this. But of course, this is nothing more than BS and just goes to show that uh, the hypocrisy of La Liga's president, where he was doing the same exact thing, charging money to clubs to produce reports while he was the vice president of La Liga. But now, all of a sudden, when Barcelona did it with Enrique Stegreira, it's the absolute worst thing he could have seen, and that Barcelona are staining, are staining the image of La Liga. Now, since Javier Tebas has asked for the resignation of Jean Laporta because the Enrique Stegreira case, my question is to Javier Tebas, well, you resign now since it's been discovered that you were doing the same exact thing as Enrique Stegreira. 
probably not, but that just goes to show what kind of hypocrite you are. Now, speaking of the Enrique Stereda case, it's reported that the attorneys of the former president, Jose Maria Bartomeo, have been meeting with the attorneys of the former president, Sandro Rosé, and with the attorneys of Barcelona in order to discuss their legal strategy because we can expect some lawsuits against uh, Javier Tebas and La Liga for all the defamation that they have been doing against Barcelona. And it seems that during these meetings, Bartomeu's president have decided to file appeals against uh, Real Madrid's request to join the legal complaint against Barcelona. Now, as we reported in a previous video, Real Madrid had, uh, I had reported that Real Madrid had submitted an official request to La Liga because they wanted to join the lawsuit against Barcelona as an official party because they claimed that they were prejudiced by Barcelona hiring Enrique Stegreda as a consultant. So Bartomeu's president has filed an appeal against this request because the attorney is arguing that Real Madrid were not prejudiced at all by Barcelona hiring Enrique Stegreda. And of course, Real Madrid's reasoning is absolute BS because as I've said many times before, there's absolutely no evidence that Barcelona tried to bribe any referees, they tried to buy any kind of influence, or there were any kind of favoritism in, fav uh, in favor of Barcelona as a result of hiring Enrique Stegreda. This is uh, simply, I can't understand why Real Madrid decided to present this request especially since Real Madrid are the club who have won two La Liga titles and three Champions League in these past 10 years, thanks to the bad refereeing calls in their favor. Now, I mentioned in yesterday's video that Barcelona were tracking a young prodigy in Brazil named Kawa Elias, who's a 17-year-old center forward. And today we have reports that Barcelona are also tracking another young prodigy, this one in Croatia, whose name is Luka Vascovic. Now, Vascovic is a 16-year-old center back who currently plays for his hometown team, Hajduk Split, and he recently made his debut with the first team of his local club, and he's actually played the entire 90 minutes on five different occasions. Now, Luka Vascovic is described as a player who has very good vision and very good ball control, and as such, he can play in a pivot position. So Barcelona will be tracking this young player over this uh, over the remainder in the season to see whether some that he was someone that can fit in a Barcelona style of play. Now, speaking of the midfield, yesterday there were reports stating that Ilkay Gundogan had officially signed his agreement with Barcelona, but of course today his agent denied those reports because the negotiations are still ongoing between Barcelona and the German Turkish player. Now, some media outlets were saying that Gundogan's agent was seen in Barcelona, but Gerard Romero, the Catalan reporter out of Barcelona, was able to catch better pictures of the person who was supposed to be Ilkay Gundogan's agent, and it was discovered that it wasn't the agent, it was in fact a director from the Italian club Inter Mila. A Gundogan agent has confirmed that no, there is no final agreement, however, the parties are still negotiating and, it's, and it looks like Barcelona want to offer Elkay Gundogan a two-year contract with a 12 million euro gross salary. Now, the reason why the both parties have not reached a final agreement is because it seems that Elkay Gundogan still has doubts about Barcelona being able to lower their wage bill in order to be able to sign him. And as I reported previously, Barcelona were trying to negotiate a clause in Elkay Gundogan's contract that stated that if Barcelona cannot register the player due to the financial fair play rule restrictions, that Gundogan would have to go on loan to another team that can match his salary. Now, of course, Elgar Gundogan has rejected this clause because he, does, he wants to come to Barcelona to play with the team and not to come to Barcelona to end up being loaned out to a different club. Now, one player who has sealed his agreement with Barcelona is, of course, Athletic Club de Bilbao's center back, Inigo Martinez, and it's reported that the agreement has been signed by the player, so Inigo Martinez will be coming to Barcelona in the summer. Now, Inigo Martinez's contract with Athletic Club de Bilbao will expire at the end of the season, so he will be arriving as a free agent, and he will be arriving upon Xabi's request, because Xabi has been requested from the club for the longest time, a left-footed center back, and it looks like Xabi is determined on having a left-footed center back, so much so that he decided to convert Marcos Alonso into a center back, because he is insisting on having a left-footed center back, and it looks like Inigo Martinez will be fulfilling this role that Xabi has been asking for the longest time. Now, I personally am not too convinced about the decision to sign Inigo Martinez, given that he is 32 years old, and also he has had a long history of injuries, but of course, I do trust Xabi and his uh, 
coaching staff, so we're gonna have to see what the player has to offer for Barcelona come next season. Now on to the news that Barcelona have a decision to make in regards to the future of the Barca Athletic center back, Shadi Riyad. Now Shadi Riyad is a 19 year old center back who came up through La Masia and who's currently playing for the Barca Athletic uh, team. And he is one of the most promising center backs to come out of La Masia in recent years. And his contract with the club expires in the summer of 2024. Now Barcelona are currently contemplating two different uh, decisions in regards to the player. The first one is to extend his contract and then send him out on loan come next season so he can get more playing time in the first division. Or the second one would be to offload Xavi Riyad because he does have a pretty good market value and they can make some very good income off him in order to help reduce that wage bill that Barcelona need to reduce by 200 million euros come this summer. Now it seems that the final decision will rest in Shadi Riyad's hands who will have to decide on whether to extend his contract with the club and try his luck on earning his spot on the first team despite there being five center backs or try his luck in a different club and ask that Barcelona offload him, uh, offload him come this summer. Now, I personally would love to see Xavi Riyad continue with Barcelona because he's a very talented center back. In fact, he reminds me a lot of Ronald Araujo, except he has uh, a better ball control. And also, good center backs are very rare to come out of La Masia. We all know that La Masia produces quality midfielders and attackers, but it's very rare that we see a center back to come out of La Masia. So I would really hope to see Xavi Riyad continue with Barcelona. Now, speaking of defenders, I do have an update for you, and this is regard Julian Araujo, who signed with Barcelona from the MLS over the winter transfer market. But unfortunately, Barcelona were unable to register him on time. So as such, he's currently training with the Barca Athletic team, but he will be unable to play any single match during this season. Now, the update is that the Barcelona coaches are very happy with the player. They say that he's adapting very well to the city, to the team, and to his teammates. And they also say that he's the kind of player that works and trains hard and keeps his head down and doesn't cause anyone problems. So the coaching staff are very happy with his progression and they're also happy with his attitude. Now this of course doesn't mean that Julian Araujo will for sure become the Barcelona starter in the right back position. But it is looking good that he's doing really well with his adaptation. And maybe the fact that Barcelona were unable to register him might be a blessing in disguise. Because after all, the player will have the entire second half of the season plus the summer to adapt, to continue adapting to the city, to the team, to his teammates, to continue lear learning the Barcelona style of play. And that way, once he does debut, whether it would be with the Barca Athletic or with the Barcelona first squad, he'll be more acclimatized and more used to the style of play rather than having to worry about getting used to the style of play and also starting at the same time and making mistakes which could end up ending his career. So that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a like. Also, I would like to invite all of you to please leave a comment down below giving me all your thoughts and opinions about all the news that I share with you. And finally, I would like to invite all of you to please subscribe to the channel so you can stay current on all the latest news in regards to our beloved club, FC Barcelona. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. And as always, be scarce.